What's up everybody, Rich Redman here, coming to you live from Crash Studio, Music City, USA. This is episode 17 of Pick Rich's Brain, and my guest is Sarah, What's the up? real deal car deal. We love Sarah. Her favorite color is purple, and she's a killer drummer. Um, how long have you been playing, Sarah? Uh, almost 11 years. Almost 11 years. So we're going to be talking about that drumming, motivation, inspiration, and the fact that Sarah's probably going to be moving to Nashville here pretty yep. soon. Yep. Yeah. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor, Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. So yeah, welcome to uh, you know you've taken lessons right here. Yeah, I've and, taken lessons here. Come and, here a couple in times. Crash Studio, and then yesterday um, you flew from Connecticut yes. to help me with my drum tensive. Yes, which is like seven or eight hours with me over at the drum pad. Yep, and you're always just such a a, a big help. And Thank it, you. It was a fun group of kids. Um, one of the students was uh, our friend Cameron, Cameron yes. Shannon, who is such an inspiration. He's he's a 13 year old kid who's had 50 surgeries he's Crazy. such a he's such a fighter um but he loves drums and I, we actually just recently did, we did a make a wish for him yes and he actually got a exact replica of my drum set so wow. dw and sabian and remo and promark and roland and everybody came to the table and they got him an exact replica i of, did not know that that's of, actually really cool of my drums and then i and he go i said what are you gonna play because everybody gets to play a song at the yep. camps you know I, I say try to be have it be note for note and then we'll tape it we'll video it you go you go home with a two camera shoot yep. and um he comes and he played this uh song uh, called time bomb and he says i just can't wait to play time bomb and he played it note for note every lick every fill every stick twirl I every know. it was it was <clears throat> solid it was a fun day it was a very very fun day so tell me um what did you what did you do last night what, Last night, it was exciting, right? It was a very exciting night last night. So I got done working with you and helping John and everything, and I went back and the weather had died down because the weather's been kind of crazy here with this 100% rain and everything. I haven't really seen that in a while, and um, it kind of mellowed out. And I went down on Broadway and I played Tootsie's for almost an hour, and then I went down and saw uh, Jim Riley, who was playing at the Nashville Underground mm -hmm. in uh, on the end of Broadway, and he pulled me up to play. I was not expecting that, and I finished out his set and. Just played from top to bottom of Broadway, literally. Oh my God, you inspire me because you're just like, yes, I'm gonna go. I want to play anywhere, you know. And then when, once you've been playing drums as long as I have, like 42 years, you're like, oh man, I, I'm I'm loving this night off thing, you know, not having to pick up a pair of sticks and and um, play Brown Eyed Girl or uh, uh, what's another overdone song? I don't know. But you Free are bird. so excited about it, you know. You're so excited about it, that, and that keeps me on track. That keeps me excited about what I'm doing. It's very inspirational. But so, how long have we been working together? I'm trying to remember. Four it's, years. It seems like a long time. We met four years ago. I think it was May, mm -hmm. and you did a drum clinic in Connecticut, and I went, mm -hmm. and I actually helped set up your drum set because you were running late that day. That's right. And everyone's so nobody knew how to set up the drum set, but I knew, <laughs> I I knew how to set up a drum set, so I. Went and I just started setting it up and I looked at your specs online. I, DW has like a picture of each, each artist's drum set and I looked at your setup and I tried setting it up as perfectly as I could and That's you came smart. in and, and then now it's coming back to me, yeah. And then you and your, you invited your, me out to your camp when you did your drummers weekend. Yeah, we used to have the drummers I weekends. Yeah, literally looked at my parents and was like, "We got to do this. We have to. This is like this will probably be a life changing camp." And it was. And yeah. I mean, all the stuff that I've done. Now is all because of your camp and all the advice that all your your um, clinicians gave right. and all the people that I've met. I still work with a lot of the people That's that right. used to work your camps. They do some of That's my That's incredible. Stuff. Well, you're a people person, right? So mm -hmm. everyone that you come in contact with, you keep in touch with. Absolutely. Through the phone, through email, through social media. You know, you're very active on social media. You're not afraid to say, hey, I exist. You know, I mean, you put your, whatever you're working on, you put it up, you put it out there. And then, you know, the fact that you live in Connecticut and you're right by the Mohegan Sun Casino, which really is a great resource yeah. because all the bands, you know, all the, the legacy acts, current acts, they're all coming through the Wolf Den or they're all coming through the arena. arena. 
And you and your family go to a lot of shows there. Yes. And then you're also, what I'm really, what I think is so cool is that you're not afraid to reach out to these people, you know, via social media. Or you'll ask me, you'll say, hey, like, Corn's coming to, like, to Connecticut. Can you connect me with Ray? Or you'll be like, hey, Mark Shulman's coming through. Should I send him a message? And you have, like, made friends with, like, so many drummers. And I've gotten to work with a lot of incredible drummers that I yeah. can now call my friend. And you set up drums for Kenny and for I've, Shulman and yeah, Mark Shulman and Kenny Aronoff and you. Mm -hmm. Whenever I've done like Matt Starr, mm -hmm. didn't you? Didn't you work with him? And I didn't Keo? do. Uh, no, actually, I've like clinic wise in Connecticut, we have this thing called the Connecticut Drum, drum Show. Show. Yeah, which and I every, still want to do a clinic at. So like this year, they have Steve Smith coming. Wow, that'll be heavy. Yeah, that's a heavy one. But I've worked with Kenny Aronoff. Greg Bissonette, and Greg, right. Mark Shulman. I've provided so like a lot of the clinicians that come into town to do these clinics, like if they need like Sabian or DW or whatever it may be, DW hardware. I sometimes get a call because they're usually at like places where I've either worked or I've gone to lessons or whatever or clinics, and they're like, "Hey, we yeah. need like a DW drum set. We need Sabian cymbals. We need like the hardware. We need yeah. like these pedals." You're a problem solver. And I, yeah. like, put myself out there. I mean, I want to help my drumming community as much as I can. Yeah. And I try, like, to help in that aspect. Like, any way I can get my hands in and helping in the drumming community, I'm, like, all for. Yeah. And how old are you? I am 23. 23. And your goal is to, you are going to move to Nashville, right? Yes. So, like, where are, are you uh, finishing up college or what? Yeah, I'm finishing up college, but I'm also, um, while I'm doing that, I'm working with a new with a new artist that I started playing with almost a year now. Yeah. And we've been doing Desiree? a lot. Yeah, Desiree. And we've been doing a lot of crazy stuff. We've been doing like Maine and New Hampshire and Long Island and New Jersey. Just some and, regional touring. Yeah, just like some regional touring, like Boston. We've mm -hmm. been doing a lot of that. We um now what's her background? Tell the So listeners. Des so I work with an artist. Her name's Desiree Bassett. She is the former lead guitarist for the Michael Jackson Circus Olay Immortal Tour. So they did the world tour and she did the world tour like three great, great. Three Play. times yeah and she's right lives right in my backyard like 50. and she performed in your backyard at and your at your you you have a party your family does like a block party every year called what is it well goodbye to summer party? it's like the end of summer blowout bash they, and, and every there's like a lot of purple because your co favorite color is purple and then your parents tell everybody about your parents because they they are they're super supportive Absolutely. but they're also super funny, super outgoing and they they're just they're just hams. Absolutely. My parents um they Frank. Oh, and you got dad too. Yeah. They're like my number one supporters. They were like ever since that day I took that interest and I was like I want to go to Rich's camp like I I like I didn't really know what I wanted to do like career-wise. Mm -hmm. I hadn't like made that decision yet and I went to this camp and I got to and I'm like this is what I want to do. Right. So you, and, you were, so you were playing drums. Yes. But the camp got you excited, and the then camp, you're like, the camp was like, like, it just like put a fire in me, and I was just like, this is what I want to do. It's right. something that I'm really good at, and I pick up quickly, yeah. and it really doesn't even seem like a job because it's so much fun. Mm -hmm. But my parents, ever since I had started taking that interest, and I kind of like zeroed in on that career path. Yes. They were 150 percent in. Like, where are we going? Like, oh, you got something? You need to go to Nashville? Good. Let's book plane tickets tonight. Like, let's go. Like, yeah, all those the, uh, they, all those tributes. What was it? Like, uh, the Alex Van Halen tribute that that the Nashville Drummers Jam Yeah. Does. And then there was, that was the my Phil first Collins one. tribute, right? See, I didn't and go like, to the Phil Collins one. I went to the Van Halen. I went to the Steve Smith one, the Pat Torpy one. And I just went to this one with... What was the one that, um, that me and Kevin Murphy hosted? <laughs> Aerosmith. No, it was a Steve Smith one. Never mind. Was it Steve Smith? I think I think you guys did the Steve Smith one from Andrew did the Van Halen one. Okay. I think you did both. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is that's really funny because like one of the most popular episodes of this podcast is the Kevin Murphy episode because yeah. <laughs> he's so crazy and so outspoken and does not care what people think. He will say what is on his mind, which is so liberating and so, my God, so freeing. Terrible. And his love of hot sauce and it was just like it was just a fun, really fun episode. Um, so like co-hosting those events was so funny. It's kind of like oil and water, but we're you know. It's really funny, and and so laughing off camera here is uh, Jim McCarthy, who is uh, he is our uh, he is our muse, 
and uh, he usually will uh, feed us some questions. Sometimes if people are coming in, I don't know if we're taking questions this time around. Sure, why not? We can we can do that. Guys, I'm monitoring your questions, so if you have any questions, ask away. Yeah, Jim comments. McCarthy, Jim McCarthy Voiceovers.com, and Jim also has his own podcast called. JMVO Weekly Primer. It's the JMVO <laughs> Weekly Primer. JM stands for Jim McCarthy VO Voiceover, and that's how uh, Jim Jim came into my life as a friend many years ago. Because I on MySpace, I met him on MySpace, <laughs> and we were talking about voiceover. And um, I still to this day haven't had any huge like paying jobs as a voiceover artist, but I do a lot of my own. If the opportunity presents itself, like I got, I'm writing a book, and I'm for sure going to do my own Audible. I'm going to read my own book, which oh, I think that's is, cool. you know, which I think is going to be smart, uh, smart thing to do. But uh, that's how I met Jim McCarthy. Was at your camp, your drummers' camp. weekend. Yeah, he did a, a talk on marketing yourself as a musician and mm -hmm. a creative. Um, so back to your parents. Uh, what do your parents do? My mom is a hairdresser. She she does it all. She's, she works in the diner, right? She, my she, grandparents used to own a diner right? in Colchester, Connecticut. It was called Herman's Diner, and she sold it after 40 years of only, owning it. She sold it last year. Uh, my dad is a mason, and mm -hmm. my grandfather, and they own their own business, and they just... You come from this like a hard working stock, yeah. Because you're a super hard worker, and then also um, something that I feel is very interesting and inspiring about you is that you are a quadruple black belt. I am a fourth degree black belt. Yes, That's I am. Incredible. So, and I've asked you in passing. I've said, now, if somebody comes up to you and is messing up with you, you can essentially kill them, right? And you're like, well, yes, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're like they, they've always taught us in martial arts if you're ever stuck, like never use your martial arts unless you're stuck in the situation. Right. When you're stuck in a situation, don't ever use it outside of the martial arts when it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Only use it when it's like absolutely like when you feel your life's in danger. When you feel like your life's in danger, then that's when. Like, that's how when I was younger, um, I went through a lot of different schools, schooling situations, mm -hmm. and like, I got one of the schools I went to, I was bullied at a lot, and I reverted to, that's how I got into drumming. Right. Is because it was like an outlet, but my second outlet was martial arts. Right. Like, and those two outlets kind of like made everything that happened through the day kind of like disappear. Right. And I, that's what drew me to drums. But when I do martial arts, they taught me like, what to do, like if ever somebody were to bully you, how to handle it pro appropriately mm -hmm. and get seek the help that you need help I've with. S I've seen you break wood and, and I'm like, what? This is like Kill Bill volume 14 two. 14 years. I've this is like, you know, this is what? This is. <laughs> I've been doing I've been doing it for um 14 years. Yeah. It'll be 14 years on August 8th. Nice. I did it. I 14 years ago, I walked That's good in. workout. It very, I like, I, it's, I try to keep like a daily, like my practicing. Try to do it every day. Try to do like three hours a day if I can get it. Right. An hour, like I'm, if I can get like a good hour and I can't do any other day, that's fine. As long as I'm getting some sort of in. But martial arts, I try to do my two, maybe three times a week. Right. And just try to keep that workout because it keeps me physically fit. So when it comes time to play, I can keep my stamina up right. playing wise. And you um, are teaching the martial arts? I do. I've been teaching martial arts for um, eight years. Yeah. And then what's the other thing that you're working with um, at-risk students or what, what you have an after-school program that you work with? Yes. Yeah, so at my martial arts school, we have an after-school program where we, we, we pick them up, we bring them back, we work on their homework with them, tutor them if needed, and then we do some like extracurricular structured activities with them. Um, and then they get all, we put them in their, they get into their uniforms and then they go off and they take class. But yeah. it's a really fun job. The kids are awesome. Awesome. Every day. A lot of, I have a couple of students that go there that are drummers. I've had a couple of students that have signed up with some of the teachers that I have in Connecticut. And I've, like, helped them out in ways. So, mm -hmm. like, you've met one of them, Nina. That's right. She um, signed up with Jay Wood. And we have, like, a. have noticed over the years of, like, as more people, the more people I meet is that there's some martial arts tie. Drumming and martial arts. Right. So, like. Ricky Rocket, he's like a third-degree black belt in Brazilian wow. Jiu-Jitsu. Wow. Which is 
takes a lot longer to get to. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu takes a lot longer to go up in rank. So it's third degree is it's like a big deal. I'm just trying to think to myself, hey, man, do I want to start studying the martial arts at 48? I think I would be like a, by the time I got to be a, that would be, that would be a long time. You'd never, I always tell. I would be 62 years old by the time I got to be a, a fourth degree black belt. I always tell adults that come in like first time, I'm like, you're, they're like, oh, I'm too old. I said, you're never too old to start. Right, right. Never too old. Anybody can do it. It's incredible. It's incredible. So you're a teacher and a student. And who are you studying with in Connecticut? Who are your teachers? In Drum teachers? Yeah. Uh, so I study with Jay Wood at the right. Woodshed. And then I study with Charlie Dye. He's at this place called Summit Studios in Manchester. I take two, two drum lessons a week because I feel like each... I'm, like, I need two drum lessons a week. Like, I, like... <laughs> I'm one of those people, so, like, I love it so much. It's like and, one... And they one, have different teaching styles, and they're teaching on... Are, are the teachers checking in with each other? Or are you, like, I'm working with her on this, and I'm working with her on this. Yeah, so, like, so, so like when I was with the... In, in the camp yesterday, when you pulled me up to do something quickly, and I was struggling with something, mm -hmm. I texted one of my teachers, because I had been working specifically on that thing with them right. a little while ago, and I thought that... I had gotten better at it, and it was like, mm, I need to work on it more. And I, like, messaged him. I'm like, hey, can we work on this for, like, the next, like, two, three that. weeks? So you're very uh, proactive in, in, in cultivating your success. And, and the thing that I asked, excuse me, Sarah to do was that I wanted her to um, do upbeats on the hi-hat. So if the beat is, um, ka, um, um, I wanted her to go, um, ch 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 on the, on, on, which is it's one of the first diagnostics I do of a player to see. It's usually one of the first things that people fall on their flat on their face you can see where their their coordination level is mm -hmm. and i know professional players that you know work all the time that can't do that so i think it's really good to have that in your bag of tricks to be able to play the hi-hat in various positions you know and be super methodical about it and then as soon as you said you oh, i stumbled with that you you made note of it so you can go work on it and fix it which was which i thought was very impressive yeah so it's always like when we do when i'm working on stuff and I always find myself struggling with it I always videotape the person that's doing it because sometimes I can't rem most of the time like it's in one ear out the other like if I have it on a video and I can revert back to it that's mm -hmm. probably the best thing so I can just watch it and repeat it over and video, over and over let me ask you we didn't have that back in the day we that's didn't. what I was going to ask you know the, 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 the dichotomy of your experiences in growing up yeah Rich you had you know vinyl and like me, cassette tape. Right. And you've got the world's wealth at your fingertips on your phone. Right. Is it refreshing for you to see, for you, Rich, to see somebody taking advantage of that? Because, I mean, there's so many people out there that could be doing what Sarah's doing. Right. Though. Right. Is that refreshing for you? Oh, sure. I mean, it's just, it's another cool little tool in the toolbox. And, you know, anything, any information that we want to find is out there. It's, but it's, at the same time, it's overwhelming. And if you yeah. don't have some sort of a methodology or a curriculum, the YouTube world can suck you in. And, you know, I've been down the YouTube rabbit hole where you type mm. in one thing and before you know it, you're it's researching you. UFOs. You know? <laughs> You know, it's like, guys, I, I just want to, I want to learn how to play a paradiddle. And next thing you know, I'm looking at, at Area 51 videos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's, like, it's like, Alex Jones! <laughs> what? The, you know? So, like, I also do DVDs, too. Like, I mm -hmm. have, like, the, a Chad Smith DVD. Like, sometimes I don't usually go to, like, YouTube unless it's something. Sometimes I go to, like, Drumio or Drum mm -hmm. Channel or... Great resources. Yeah, they're, like, yeah. and they're fun to watch just because mm -hmm. they break it down. And it's not, like... You're not distracted by all like the ads and all the other videos that they try to distract you with. It's just mm -hmm. like zeroed in and you can put your full That's focus true. on that. For sure. I do, um, I try to like collect like any clinics I go to, like if they offer DVDs, I have them. Mm -hmm. So like, and then I just watch them and then you like have the hard copy. That whole it. dresser over there is full of DVDs. The funny thing is, is I don't have a DVD. Like they're not making Apple products with DVD drives anymore. I don't have a CD player. Like people give me CDs. I don't have a CD player. It's, I don't have one. You could buy the. We're talking about drumming DVDs, not yeah, the yeah. other kind of DVDs that you like. Yeah, just like I'm like like it's getting so like the the powers that be are oh the <laughs> the, 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 the powers that be are weaning us off of these certain technologies. You know, don't you think, Jim? I do. Yeah, and it's you know I have the same kind of situation with I have VHS tapes. Sure, in that okay. other room over there. I used to have v VHS tapes when I was smaller. And the funny thing is, is like I don't think they allow them. Like I have the, the DCI videos from Steve Smith. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Back when he was wearing Argyle socks and had hair. And, you know, breaking down Don't Stop Believing when he was with Steps Ahead. Right. Yeah. I think you can go to Walmart. Vital information, that's right. I think you can go to Walmart and they take them. The v- they, I think they charge you per VCR. And you take them and they'll, down, and they'll take digitize them, and they'll, them and they'll digitize them. Yeah. But I don't think DCI allows them up on YouTube mm. is, the, is the, the issue. Yeah. Because you cannot find, I don't think you could find his videos on there. It's funny, like, I think a company like DCI, I think they're, I mean, I think they're in trouble. I mean, it's like... That was all the rage, and yeah. that was how we got our information. And, mm-hmm. and now there's there's so yes. many places to get drumming mm-hmm. information. But the, you know, Drum Channel and Drummy are very very brilliant. And of course, I've been involved with both of them, and I love all the people there at, at those at it, those outlets. You know, it used to, but the gatekeeper argued right. It used to say that back in the day that Mike Tyson was the greatest boxer at the time and everything. And it's like you never understood that there might be a guy in South America somewhere that's probably ten times as better. He'll never have his day because nobody knows who he is. Mm. So what's the moral story there? The whole game, the game has changed. Yeah. You can put up a video if you're not out there putting you and you're a really good player. How many guys have come out of nowhere that modern drummer hasn't discovered now? Hmm. Yeah. Gatekeepers have been taken out of the equation. I went, I've gone to a lot of drum camps and I travel a lot and I like to go to these drum camps because they have something very unique and different to offer each one of them. And I've seen, there was one of your campers at your camp Mm -hmm. and I think his name was Harry. Oh, um, I'm drawing uh, a blank. Harry Myrie. Yes. And he just, I, he doesn't really, he didn't really like. I hadn't really seen him, and he did a Drumeo episode I know. a couple of weeks ago. I, I was like, and I saw him at the Drummers Jam, and I was like, "Good for you, dude! Yeah, That's course, awesome!" Totally. And his, te- his teaching style is very like comedic, you know. Yeah, and, you know. Uh, I didn't even know like he like was like a teacher. I thought that was very very cool. I know, okay. and I hadn't seen him in forever. It's really interesting, but I like. I mean, he was he was a really great player, and yeah. he put himself in a position to go to that camp, and now he's part of the fabric of Nashville. He made the commitment to move here, and a uh, smart guy. I mean, uh, mm. lived very uh, affordably and bought a bought property in nashville and that's like something that a lot of us are talking about because uh, you know the the plight of the of the aging drummer it's it's such an interesting time to be playing a musical instrument because there's less jobs there's more people that want to do the jobs there's less jobs and um and and i just think that the overall you know the way the respect there's a lack of respect for musicians, you know, and, they, and, and the powers that be just kind of want to, they want to underpay musicians. So we're just trying to like, uh, uh, you know, get some security for ourselves. And yeah. I think one of the best ways you could do that is through real estate. So I'm so glad he did that. We got some questions, Jim? Got a question. Yeah. Uh, Guy Buonacore Jr. Yeah. I hope I'm not butchering his last name. What's up, name. Guy? Sarah, if you could play with any band right now, who would it be? Oh, that's an on-the-spot question. Um, if I could play with any band right now, I've been really, really into Bruno Mars. Yeah, that, sure. That would be that would be a really cool one to do. But another one would have to be I've I've seen a lot of shows, but Bruno Mars would have to be one of them. And my second one would have to be oh, what was it? Mm, mm, I just had it and I totally lost it. Yeah. <laughs> so it was either Bruno Mars or like. Like an '80s rock band, so like Def Leppard or Van Halen yeah. or like one of those bands. And I'm like so I love all different types of music. music. You do, yeah. But I've like really been on this like funk kick lately. Yeah, that would be a cool. Band. Yeah, and then the last time you were at my camp, you did a Bruno's Mars song. So there's a there's a video of you out there. Did you load that up to your YouTube? I did. Channel? I did. And then tell us about the hit like a girl thing. You got really close, right? Yes. Yeah, so I did. The, I've done the hit like a girl competition twice now. I did it the first year, and I won the Joe Hibbs Memorial Scholarship. That's right. Five hundred dollar scholarship, and I put it towards. And I went to your first ever drum intensive camp. That's right. And then I did it last year, and I did a lot of like if, for all my people that or like in the live feed right now that no I did like daily Facebook lives every day cuz it was all based on votes to get me to the finals and right. I just I did a compilation of songs from like jazz to today's like modern music and I did like 10 or 11 different genres and I just flowed one into the other into the other into Yeah, we the did other. um we started with uh, Sing Sing Sang right yep. from Gene Krupa and then you went into Motown right yep. and then you went into um I think Disco and then Iron Maiden and then Bruno Mars and in the era that it was um, and then uh, Phil Collins yeah it was um, blah blah yeah. right that whole thing 
<laughs> that was really that was a fun video. Um, it was a very and fun. Our buddy Brady uh, Brady Hartman Brady Hartman did uh, you know put that together for you? No clicks. No clicks. You just had nothing. to like figure out how to flow seamlessly from one thing to the next. It just you did a great took, job. And it, thank you. And it just yeah. took a lot of just like repeating and repetition and just like putting in the countless hours of trying to nail every part down. Right. Because it was I just wanted to go at it in a different way. Everybody goes into a, like I felt like everybody. The first year I did it went in and it was either just a straight cover or it was just like tons, so of, chops. Long, tons of chops. I wanted to go at it in a more unique way. Yeah. Where you're like bringing them through a story. Right. Of like to like the how music has grown and how it's like changed. changed and I think and it's the responsibility of any good drummer to have a command over the last, you know, hundred years of music. You know? And it also shows people that you're versatile. That's yeah. why I also wanted to do that video to show people like how versatile and I And it can was be. musical and so maybe the next time we'll we'll, we'll do that same concept. Well, oh, it'll be a bunch of st the styles that are like strung together, but maybe this time you like, get to stretch a little bit more and play just a little bit more chops. Yeah, you know I mean? it doesn't have to be gospel chops, but right. some really cool soloing around some hits or some big band stuff. Yeah. So, I, I've so been when's that coming up? Um, I'm actually not doing it this year. I'm kind of going to take a break. Nice. Kind of okay. get the creativity juices flowing and mm -hmm. kind of just that's smart. Hash out an idea and yeah. give myself like time to kind of just digest it all in. Mm -hmm. But la I did it last year and took most popular video in the competition and which was like fourth place and i nice. did it out of a whole bunch of women from around the world yep. which was i still can't believe it like it still like sometimes doesn't like it I'm like it's really the, happened it, really, it really happened did. yeah you like, did you did the work and it happened that's so awesome so awesome what else jim what what are you seeing as an as an outsider Looking in at a at this at this young lady and all the hard work she's doing. I yeah, think and I'm thinking is, um, at what point was you know this you you mentioned this event the hit like a girl contest is kind of like a real uh, feather in your career feather in your cap. Sure. Mm -hmm. But you played with a lot of bands just yeah. impromptu, just filling in, sitting in. That a lot of people don't do that. They don't. They're not thinking the same way that you're thinking, right? Right. What was the? Have there been moments like that that are feather in your cap moments for you prior to this? I've had a lot that of. Are like wow, I pinch me. I can't believe that. Well, you got up and sat in with the three kings a couple of times, right? One time. At a uh, one time. It was actually my birthday weekend and you're like come come play it was in my... hartford right at the comcast center yes yeah. and that was that was nuts i like i like took in that like from your perspective and it kind of what song like, did you did you play hicktown i did hicktown you, you played hicktown with kurt allison and tully kennedy who and uh and who have basically been playing without al dean now for like nearly 20 years along with uh jay jackson and um Jack Sizemore, and um, those guys are always supportive uh, and understanding enough for us to say, like, look, at this fine young person is going to come in. They've got hopes. They've got dreams. It's be so cool to give them this experience. I can't believe. I would have. I can't imagine if if one of my drum heroes like Alex Van Halen or Carmen Apice, you know, in the '80s, would have said, "Hey, Rich, come by sound check and you know jump up and play with King Cobra," or Can I ask you or, this, or would you would, 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 would you have let her sit in on one of the songs with Al Dean playing live? Playing live, you mean during the show? Yeah. Uh, sure, I mean, I don't. he probably wouldn't have gone for it. I know yeah, that. Yeah, but, but of mean, course. Yeah. yeah, of course. She'd be able to pull it out. A big time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's there. I've had several students over the years sit in, but the one thing that uh, that always would grab uh, that grabbed my band's attention about you is that you would you hit the drums. You know what I mean? You hit the drums. I get that a lot. There's a feel. There's a feel. That you play in time, and there is also a respect for the music and the fact that you really knew the song. You know what I mean? Which is really really great. And because because I've had other people sit in that. that they fell flat on their faces because they didn't have the respect to even learn the song. And that's the number one thing is knowing the material and having a reverence for it and knowing that, okay, it's an eight bar intro, it's a 12 bar verse and knowing the kick drum patterns and right. when all you, that stuff. Whenever you get in, so like a lot of the stuff that I've done, so like also I've played with Big and Rich. Had no. Oh, you, you jumped up. Uh, Keo let you over the uh, Keo, right? No, he had no idea. Keo had no idea. I saw Keo last night. It was like crazy. You had no idea that you were jumping up? Keo had no idea. I went to the show because I worked. It was at the Travelers Golf Tournament, which is like one of the bigger events in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And we 
I went and I got a seat that day and I had worked that week so it was kind of just like a chill day and I wanted to see Big and Rich because I wanted to see Keo play and we were hanging out for a little bit and I got pulled back for meet and greet and I went back there and they're like oh how do you know Keo I'm like oh I'm a drummer I've met Keo at one of the camps in Nashville he's like oh cool big John, John and Kenny and all of a sudden like midway through the show they stopped and John looks at me and says, this girl has not missed a single beat, a single lyric, nothing. If I remember correctly, you're a drummer. And I got to ask you, do you want to come up and play? <laughs> I've never ripped a gate open so fast to go play. <laughs> See, that's the thing. You jumped up on stage. And, and I jumped there. up and we played Ball with the Ball by Kid Rock. And yeah. I, it, it was a night, like, playing Soundcheck with you. It's a night that I will never, ever, ever forget. And a lot of the stuff that I get to do, like, do these backstage experiences and everything is I've met them. I've met the art drummers or I've met or I've been invited. And those experiences I love because it helps me see like what I'm going to get myself into. Right. I get to watch. Like I like to like watch and see what's going on and kind of like take it in and digest it. Cause it's like, this could be me one day. Right. Like I need to like, the more knowledge knowledgeable I can get about this kind of stuff, the better I can. I'll be off in the future. Well, you're um, putting yourself in the situations to make these connections, and you're really, really going for it. You know, you're not just uh, you know living on the computer in Cyberland, hoping that something, uh, some of these things are right. You're going out. You're you're crashing parties. You're shaking hands. You're putting yourself in the right situations, and you're fearless. And so, I think that could be definitely. Um, a, a lesson for people of all ages, you know, just being fearless, mm. staying hungry. I mean, if we were ever going to talk about the, the crash concept, you know, so I have my book finally coming out, yep. uh, uh, hopefully next month, um, on a subject I've been speaking on for 12 years. And the idea is that you are relentlessly committed to this cause, right? You value relationships. You cultivate new relationships all the time. You've got a super, super, super positive go get them attitude. You're developing your skills all the time to drum teachers going to drum camps going to you know you've been to my camp you've been to riley's camp you, you know thomas you, lang's thomas camp. lang's camp um and and you're you're hungry for success i mean so you Absolutely. definitely live and die by the crash concept so um very cool i high fives I actually talked about the crash method because I literally live by that crash method. And you wrote a... Did you write a paper? I had to write a five-page paper for... I just tested for my fourth degree black belt um, in November and we had to write a five-page paper and I used that crash method about if you're committed to your craft, you build the relationship and by building those relationships, you have to have a good attitude. Right, right. And by having that good attitude, it helps build your skills and it keeps you hungry and wanting to learn more. It's just, it all trickles. It's like domino. It's like a I domino use it effect. with my teaching at my work and mm -hmm. I just like, I use that crash That is so cool all and the it's time. so easy to remember. Absolutely. I love that. And then I got to see some video snippets of your, of your black belt test and that was like an eight hour test? It was an eight hour test. And you, and you just stopped for just pee breaks? Uh, I had like a 30 minute break. That was it. I mean, because that would be tough for me. I'd be like, um, sir, I got to pee again. Um, you know, well, <laughs> the aging bladder. Well, they definitely, they teach us like. they like, yeah, could you don't chop? Oh, I just peed my pants. <laughs> well, they. Uh, bladder control issues. Oh, sorry. my God, guys. Yeah. So it was a lot of prep. So like I spent probably, I think it was like six or three to six months. And I just like trained regularly like more regularly than i do and mm -hmm. just like conditioning myself so when it came time for that moment like my body was hydrated enough and that i was like physically like fit for it and i could like this had the stamina to do it mm -hmm. so it was a lot and was, what happens do you get like a cool little card to put in your wallet or something fourth degree back black belt well we do you get like discounts at like starbucks or no movie I, theaters i wish yeah but we get um we get our belt but you have the option of you get certified so, so I just got my certification. It's from like the Cookie One, the World Taekwondo Association, and we get certified for our, our degrees. So I have every for every single one, and I got just got. I'm getting mine this week for my fourth degree black belt. Amazing. And then you get that, which is like a big certificate, and then you get like a little card. So like when like they make the cards so like when you go do tournaments, like instead of bringing that whole certificate with you to show them, you have like a little card, and it goes in your wallet, and you can just bring it and show them. Nice. So, are you getting a lot of people reaching out to you for advice and stuff like that? Is, like is martial arts or it? drumming? Any of it? Any of it? Yeah, I have a lot of people that like reach out to me. I've had a lot of people. 
I've through my martial arts school, I think I've had like 12 or 13 people that I've signed up and a couple of them that have made it all the way to black belt and are like now teaching with me, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I also get a lot of people through like Instagram and Facebook Messenger of like, hey, any advice on how to this or like what's your advice on how to like go out of like a certain um, genre. Like I've had people that reach out to me all the time like, hey, what's that ride symbol you use? What's your, what's your setup? How do you set up things? Like yeah. any advice on like I've had a bunch of my friends like if i can't make it to a show because i have a, another show because i'm in like four different bands where i am how are you juggling the four different bands calendar google calendar right facebook like the google calendar or your phone calendar and just like color coordinating and being like hey i have a gig this day like and always like it's always like trying to it is a juggling act of trying to like keep it all in balance right. and keep everything but i usually am like with the calendars and color coordinating, okay, this band is this color, this band is this That's color. Smart. I do. And doing colors. Yeah. And then you can see like if somebody one of your bands says, Hey, we wanna we got called in for a gig on this day. Here's or here's all the dates. Yeah. You can go through that calendar and then line it up and be like, Oh, I can't do this day or this but I can do this day and kinda right. just like see. And your and people your 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 abilities are speaking for themselves, your attitude is your preparation is speaking for itself. And so people would actually rather have you when they can get you than not at all, which is a great place to be. I kinda did that same thing when I moved to Nashville. I was in twenty seven bands in nineteen ninety nine and somehow it just all kinda worked out. But if you're if you get to finally get to the the point where people just want to have you they gotta have you they'll work around your schedule that's a really cool place to yeah be. and you could get there by just consistently delivering a high quality product and succeeding expectations and have that firm handshake and have that smile on your face and have your drums be good and be prepared you know like all the, all the people that you've learned from and look up to like all kind of use over preparation hustle consistency execution as a business model so mm. you're doing all the right stuff and then you'll when you come to nashville you just do that same thing over and over right you know? it's always good to go into a situation over prepared than not prepared enough right that's what i always say you always go in there so i also fill in with a lot of bands in connecticut too i filled in with a lot when i'm not doing my four projects i'm anytime i get like calls i'm like hey we need you to fill in for our buddy. He can't make it. And I've always like either like have played with the band or like filled in. So I've kind of have an idea of like what the songs are. I'm like, hey, send me like all your audio recordings of like all your stuff. So that like if it's like a medley, like so I can try and do it as exactly as you guys do it. So right. that I can go in there and make it feel as good as it can be. Sure. As if you had your drummer. Yeah. And you're very, very politely persistent. Like even doing this podcast, I think you asked me four times we're doing the podcast right on the sunday when can you when can you do the podcast and it turned into another podcast yeah and it's just crazy you'll be on two of them mm. sarah's gonna be on the next one too yeah okay cool cool <laughs> doing one day all right of course Bam. <laughs> of course you crazy um but no that was like when are we doing this we're doing this, right? So well, I'm like, I love I had, it. Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. I just thought it would be a cool idea. You kind totally of totally cool. You, you kind of have all the stuff you've taught me and all the stuff that I've learned and all the experiences that I've had and done. It's kind of it would be. I just thought it would be. You could pick my brain of all the stuff that you've taught me and kind of like. Interesting. We're like we're like Yoda, picking each other's Skywalker brains. and Yoda. Did you, see that, just did you see that picture floating around with Yoda with the crinkly face, you know, as as he was, and then his skin is all smoothed out, and it's from like a face, like a filter, and they're like, "Stop doing this to your photos." <laughs> it's full, it's a, it's a meme. It's I've... floating around where like Yoda's face is all smoothed out and and youthful. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious, man. So, yeah, no. So just you just got to be super when you're super persistent. Super persistent. Polite politely persistent yeah. but it gets you if you're not and you just sit there and it, n stuff's not going to be handed to you sure. you right. have to go out there and put yourself so like when i'm not playing gigs on the weekends i'm like oh that's a good concert and i'll go and i like study i love like just studying the drummers and like sometimes it could be like the shirt that i wear and they come over afterwards and they're like hey or a lot of the times it's i've had people come up to me they're like funny enough they're like Aren't you like Rich Redmond's star student? <laughs> I get it. Sometimes I'm like, I get that. They're like, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 Rich is one of my teachers. I go and do a lot yeah, of yeah. stuff, or I get a lot of like, hey, weren't you the girl that did that hit like a girl competition video? That's amazing. With it's the so it's like really cool to see like how people 
have found me through social media. And you also do, are you essentially like a street team coordinator for anything drumming in the in Connecticut. Absolutely. Because like anytime I'm coming to town, you're like, hey, you want to do a speech? Hey, you want to do a clinic? Hey, you want to do a master Trying class? Trying to keep you busy. Yeah. And, and and all of our friends, you know, like, yep. you know, Kenny and Mark and Matt and all of our friends, you know, they come through Connecticut. You're like. Jim Riley. Oh, I've Jim Riley. Yeah. I'll be like, like, hey, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll set it up. We'll do the marketing. I'll get you your kit. I'll, I'll tech for you. Any questions, Jim, that we got coming in? Um, one of my favorite outs. episodes was the Three Kings one. The Three that Kings one. Good. That was we a really, good. that one was really good. Yeah. My favorite, my all-time favorite. Because because of our, our the the way we get along with each other? Finish each you, other's you guys cut up, yeah, you cut up. And the next thing I think, you're, the next one you're going to have, you're going to have actually Aldine in it, right? Oh, that would be fun, yeah. That's happening, right? Jim, Jim really wants me to get Jason Aldean. Jason Aldean. Politely persistent. Right? If, you're, if, you're, if you're listening, Jim McCarthy wants you on the podcast, and so do I. You would totally do it. Sure. Yeah. We just, it's all scheduling. You know? That's right. It's all scheduling. I'm actually going to be on Knox's. Knox has a uh, a radio show. Knox Country. I'm doing it this Wednesday. Is it a, a radio show? Or it's a podcast? radio show. He's already up for an ACM award for best radio show. Really? Yeah. Huh. Where's he, where's he doing He shoots it at Treasure Isle. And why am I not voicing it? I don't know. <laughs> so I'd like, like, I th- like, yeah, well, I'll find out who does that. <sighs> What's it called? Knox Country. Knox Country. What's the radio station? <laughs> I don't know. Coming to you live from Treasure Isle, right? Yeah, Treasure That's Isle right. Studios. Done. So yeah. He's done. I'm totally done. Knox, come on. Hit hey. me up, guy. <laughs> Do it right now. So what are, what are uh, some interesting uh, uh, projects you have coming up? You're, you're working with Desiree. You guys are doing... Um, Dates around the Northeast. Yep. You're still playing with your four other bands, subbing so, for everyone that'll have you, right? Absolutely. And then you're just saving your shekels to move to Nashville. And then do you have a do you have a do you have a launch date for Nashville? I'm thinking once I finish school, like whenever I'm trying to, I'm like it's all because I've been. When do you finish school? I finished school. I think in like two years. Oh, okay. So all like right. I'm almost I'm on the edge there. Like I'm almost done. But I um. Now, what's the degree going to degree going to be in? Uh, just general studies for right now, okay. just to get like all my general education done. I right. figured get that done, and then if I wanted to take on another career, I have all the general education done. And then I can hop oh. into something else. Oh, okay. So, so you're going to finish school with just your general education studies, but that won't be a degree. It'll be a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree in in general studies. Like a bachelor of science. A bachelor of science. Okay. You know, I think it's just important for just. Do it and get it done. Yeah, you know, no one's gonna be able to take it away from you, and you're still gonna be able to kick, be able to be a kick butt drummer. Um, and you're doing it while you go to school. Yeah, and you're probably making a good living at it. I would imagine. Yeah, between doing teaching school? the kids and teaching, you teach drum lessons and then teaching the kids and then playing in bands. It's probably pretty. And good. And babysitting and, and doing. Body. I like. I'm one of those people that's like, I gotta be you need on to the move my all the time. Yeah, you need to inspire my daughter to get into babysitting. She's twelve. I love it. Yeah, I love it's good it. Good money, in it, right? Twelve is that yeah. old? Is that old enough? That's old enough. Right? Yeah, I start. Well, I started a little. I started. I got my first job as soon as I turned sixteen. I got my first job, mm-hmm. and I've had a with the after school program. I've been working that for eight years too, and then I was like, started gigging in one band and then another band. And became another band. And became another band. And I just <laughs> been trying to juggle it all and do and I work with you now at your drum tensives and right. whatever you got going on or I work whatever drum clinics go on in Connecticut yep. and I do teach drum lessons. I have my first student ever, which I have thought would be cool and it's one of our family friends and you're using my fundamentals book right I, we finished your fundamentals book you in went like all the way through it all and the way through and the upbeat hi-hats and all that stuff and then the pea soup stuff and then the fills and all that stuff i'd love to see the student film the student doing the, the final solo the, the final little, the solo little, boom ga, ga, boom ba, boom ga, 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 go, 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 that the, the, the last yeah solo. no i can make that happen yeah, i mean that'd be cool we're working so like it's been cool to have a student and work with them mm-hmm. because it's like I'm getting fed the information again, so it's like a good refresher for you, and you're relearning, not relearning, but like getting a... F- How you do things and why you do things. Yeah, and then, but you're also teaching them. 
So yeah. it's like a double win. Teaching feels really, really and good. And it's right? really, like, it's a I'm, super satisfying I'm, I'm feeling. I'm proud. I, I am proud of the fact that I like I have like a teacher's heart, you know what I mean? And that I've been able to like give a lot of information to people and share information with people. So uh, it does feel good to be a teacher. I really like that. Did you go to the Midtown Cafe last night? I did not. You didn't end up getting over there? No, I ended up, as soon as I got done and everything, I came, went to my hotel. I hadn't even checked in. Like, I literally came right off the plane. I played a show. Came to my camp. Friday night, played my show, got home at 12. By the time I was done with everything, 1 o'clock, I slept for maybe three hours, got Just on a plane, flew here, literally got off the plane, started working with you, camp, yeah. and then played on, bro and then went and checked in, and then the weather, I died down. The weather's been crazy here. It sure has. With this rain, you've like two weeks of rain here? A lot of rain. It's gross. Yeah. I'm not, I get seasonal depression. I don't like that. That's why I'm going to sunny Los Angeles for 11 days where the sun shines every day. I love it. It makes me happy. So yeah, no. Susan Cardile. That's Cardio. my that's my mom. The real deal. The real deal, Cardio. Sue. Hi, is that my Mountain Dew? <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about her. It's so funny. It's it's diet Mountain Dew, Sue. So it doesn't have the sugar and calories, but it has all of the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was on the treadmill today, and I was working out next to a girl. She had a, a diet Mountain Dew, and it just looks so luscious. And I'm, I feel like I'm very dehydrated today. Nectar uh, of the gods. Yeah, man. Really, really good. So we're having fun here, Craft yeah. Studio, man. Very, 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 very fun. Thank I, you for having me on the episode. Yeah, of course, I, I you're you're just so inspiring, an inspiring young lady, Thank such you. a hard worker. We we love your parents. Um, I know that I'm going to be seeing them right before we start our tour. We're actually Mohegan. starting our tour at the Mohegan Sun this year. We're actually doing two dates. We're doing a festival in Fort Lauderdale, and then two weeks later, we're we're headlining the final night of Stagecoach in oh, in, wow. in Indio, California, and it's been probably about six or seven years since we play there and so oh, that, wow. that's going to be really fun and so after that I'm going to fly to Connecticut probably do a clinic for you your teacher Jay Wood absolutely we'll get everybody information about that and then we go into two nights of rehearsals and then a two night opening run basically in, uh, two nights at the, at the Mohegan Sun you're coming Friday night I love that and it's always nice that you know, you're not. You don't. You don't always hit me up for tickets, which is great. Never. I only never, get a certain ever, amount ever. per year. Um, but the thing is, I would get them. I would get them to you. You know. But uh, you guys doing Charlotte this year again? I'm sure we're going to do the Carolinas because it's such a huge market for us. You know, we used to. You know, we used to do over 200 shows a year, and now to do between 50 and 60 shows a year, piece of cake. You know, um, it's like those two-hour hour gigs. It's like. And you know when I when I, when I hear about four. people playing four forty five minute sets or five forty five minute sets and I'm like wow those were the days it's great training ground it you is know? now the playing I do is the playing I do is playing on a, playing on a song in the studio take a break another song take a break and you're cranking out songs in the studio mm -hmm. which is but but it's not it's not it's it's a way different psychology than a ninety minute show and then I do a ninety minute show by playing multiple sets a night is a whole other thing yeah like know. nine to one ten to two mm -hmm. six to nine yeah. like all those different time time slots I filled in for a band last summer it was a five hour show yeah. on the beach for an a lake association mm -hmm. and they were had their like their summer blowout bash party and they had all these contests and all this cool stuff so like we would play like a 45 maybe 30 minute set depending and they would have games in between so they would stop us so that you could play so they would pull the band out to play so like tug of war and like, really <laughs> so it was like a, it was a fun like fun little breaks but that was probably the longest gig i've ever played it was a lot of fun it was like a 60s rock 60s um rock 80s rock like it was yeah. a little mix 60s 70s and 80s yes there you go stuff. to me the 70s was the best music and i don't know my, people might disagree with me but i was I actually wish i had been a teenager during the 70s i think that would have been really fun but that's a whole other podcast um but i just wanted to uh thank you again for being here thanks you're very bud. inspiring you're a, a you're also a good pal of mine and how can um people find you on the internet you can find me i have uh I only have two social medias, but I have Facebook. My name is Sarah, S-A-R-R-A, Cardile, C-A-R-D-I-L-E-O, D-I-L-E. -E. Yeah. And then, Deal, yeah. And then I have a, a, <laughs> an Instagram page, and it's drummaniac21, D-R-U-M-M-A-I-N-I-C-21. Drum maniac. So How would you voice that, Jim? Drummaniac21. Yeah. Follow me. 
And then <laughs> the um, Trump Maniac Podcast. Hey. Yeah, you should, you, might hey. As well, you should start doing it. Oh man. Just <laughs> oh start man. cutting up. You can actually have your have your dad and your grandfather and your mom as guests, and that would be just you guys just cut up. Oh, your gosh. dad is so funny. He's a man child. Like he's he is a, he's a he man is. child. He's I will so agree. Funny. Relate very well to oh, him. totally, <laughs> totally. You don't want to see me grow up. Oh my God! <clears throat> he, yeah, he is. A f- he is super funny. He is always. Anytime we're in those situations where it's kind of like a serious, he breaks the seriousness up all the time. It's, yeah, he takes that seriousness and he's like, no, <laughs> no. He is great, guys. Thanks for watching so much live from Crash Studio. Another episode of Pickridge's Brain. My guest was Sarah, the real deal car deal, Drum Maniac 21. Follow her on all the socials. And of course, follow this show. Like, rate, comment, share. We're going to be on Google Play. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher. We're on YouTube. And of course, my website, richredmond.com. Always big shout out to our buddy Jim McCarthy, Jim McCarthy voiceovers.com, and his podcast, the JMVO Weekly Primer. Check it out. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>